Hello everybody and welcome to this video which is kindly sponsored by Squarespace. So the last time I did one of these someone asked about SEO or search engine optimization. So here's the SEO page uh, for the home page of the website. So these are some of the features you can click on down here and you can see this is some of the information you have. So there in the little white square that's where the information will appear if you Google Drakinafel, I suppose. And so there is a little box here where you can see you can alter the little, little flavor text that appears underneath the main link results. So I'm going to do that. And it takes the main header for your website's result as whatever you entered originally as a default, as you can see there. But you can change that in this little bar here. So if you want to have a slightly different search result as a prefix or appendix. And you can look up the search keywords, etc. So you can try and optimize your SEO that way as well. And then if you go up here, you can find a whole ton of extra stuff that you can use to help get your search engine optimization correct and get your website boosted up the Google search rankings, which I suppose is important if you want everyone to find your website. So that's Squarespace SEO in about a minute. So if after all these little mini tutorials I've been doing, you think you could build a website for maybe ideally naval history purposes, but you never know, you might want to do it for some other reason, then head over to squarespace.com forward slash Drakinafel. You can get a free trial, and once you're ready, that little link will give you 10% off your first website or domain. So thanks once again to Squarespace for sponsoring the video, and on with the main show. So a few weeks ago, I had a random idea. I'd had a set of the hot sauces from the Hot Wings Challenge people sitting on my shelf in the kitchen for quite a while, never really bringing myself to try them. And then uh, my cameraman from the America trip decided that uh, perhaps we should try them. And I thought, OK, but if I'm going to put myself through that amount of suffering, it should be for a semi good cause. And thus, in a moment of madness, I put up a community post basically saying, well, if you can come up with some questions for him to ask me and me to ask him, we'll do this hot wings thing together. And then you can learn a little bit more about both of us and, well, to be honest, mostly about the America trip. And it would be a fun little fun Friday thing to do. And, well, if we go through immense amount of pain, then hopefully that's amusing for somebody. So it will have benefited everyone in some way, shape or form. Uh, so after about four or five hours, we had enough questions to do 10 questions apiece. And, well, here's the result. Incidentally, if something like this is something you might want to see occasionally a bit more with more questions that are not directly related to naval history all the time, um, then let me know in the comments below. And who knows, it might become a, you know, a quarterly thing or something like that. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a probably slightly inadvisable. We don't video. try this at home, basically. No. <laughs> We do this, so you don't have to. Um, but then, so do a bunch of other people. So. They do. We are the, this. No way. This is an original idea. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We totally didn't buy the uh, all of the. Sources yeah, this is from... our this is our new company. We're actually scrapping the channel and my channel. We're just going to do this instead. <laughs> We're going to call this Taste Buds. Yes. Welcome to the first episode of Taste Buds. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, you may recognize we have the various sources from the Hot Wings Challenge. Um, I think this is like two seasons ago now because this stuff's been sitting on my shelf in the kitchen for about like since about halfway through lockdown. I've walked past it quite a lot. Yeah. So, so at and, this point, better start using it. Yeah. And, you know, we've got, yes, we know the Hot Wings Challenge uses Hot Wings. So one, we don't want to completely rip off their plat idea. Also, I actually don't particularly like chicken wings because there's all bones. Yeah, it's a bit of a faff. So we decided we're going to go with KFC mini fillet halves instead. Yes, we have. <laughs> um... And we're going to be going in, um, we're going to be asking questions. So those of you who saw the community post, everyone put out a bunch of questions. Uh, we curated the 10 best, uh, assuming that we survive all the way up to the 10th source. Um, and we're going to start off with Elliot here, who's going to be the first one to consume. I am? Yes, you are. Okay. Because that means that basically when we get, if we get to the last right. ad, Either you'll be dead, ideal, and then I'm the last survivor. Okay. Or you are alive, at which point, having experienced it, you will probably be pointing and laughing and I mocking okay. me because you'll know right. what I'm about to experience. The plan is to make you fail. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, um, and for those of you who aren't aware, um, Elliot is my cameraman from the America I trip. I am. 
Uh, long-suffering cameraman. <laughs> long-suffering indeed. And also has his own channel. I do. Two guys, bad games. Go watch the link in the description. <laughs> <laughs> Where we do something else that's entirely inadvisable. Yeah. <laughs> we can't even talk about it. Just, no, just watch it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're starting off. The with... idea is we put it on the plate first. Then, but yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I think that's probably. I mean, I know on the show they scatter it all over the um, the chicken. But okay, I assume this comes off. Twist. I think it's just like that, and then squeeze maybe. Is it a glass or plastic? Watch as on the first episode of Taste Buds, we don't know how to... There you go. Okay, that definitely works. So what are we talking in terms of, of a match? We're talking... That's like probably... that? Mm, maybe a bit more. Because uh, well, it, it's a copy <laughs> for both of us, hasn't it? Oh, I suppose. Okay. There's no point in, in, in dipping in... Uh, right. That's yeah. one. One. That's not racist. Right, so, not <laughs> so this is the Yellow Bird Bliss and Vinegar with ripe bread, serrano, strawberries and coconut. Whatever that means. I mean, I'm not really usually a spice person, so I have no idea what any of yeah, that means. That's the wombo combo. So, so pick, I pick believe your... that you ask a question and then I eat? No, you, you pick um, one and then while you're eating, I ask the question. And I then... can't even rip off the thing properly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't and, then, uh, and then, yeah, and then we... Um... Okay, I choose... A oh. deformed one. It's got like a chest cavity for some reason. I like this one. Okay, I'm gonna. Is that enough? Mm -hmm. There we go. That looks yeah. like about half. So the question is: Once you've finished eating, um, how fun dash exciting dash interesting is Drac to spend several weeks going around museum ships with? Hmm. Mm. Mm. That was just pretty good. Can I do a second dab? If you want. Mm. I feel like later on I'm going to totally regret all of this. <laughs> Especially my toilet. Hmm. How interesting is Drac? I can't believe you actually started with the hardest question. <laughs> um, so the thing. The thing about this is, I'm the cameraman, but me and Drac have been friends for so long it's just fun. We just go around talking about stuff we're interested in. Sometimes talk about stuff neither of us are interested in. But we still <laughs> listen anyway. Um, but the ships themselves are such a good piece of history that both of us are always entangled and enthused about getting up and doing the work anyway. So honestly, it's very, very interesting. And I quite enjoy it. <laughs> it's probably the best job I've ever had. Because um, there's a great opportunity to go around the world exploring things people don't usually get to see. And what better way to do that than with a friend? So, and slightly fewer people getting stabbed. Slightly fewer. Compared to uh, working in Croydon, which we've both had the pleasure <laughs> of. We've both had the pleasure of doing that, yeah. <laughs> Don't ever work in Croydon, kids. No. When... Don't do Croydon. Yeah, Croydon is the kind of place where, you know, if someone gets chased out of the railway station, down the high street, and stabbed in broad daylight, and the first time it happens, you're shocked and horrified and fearing for your safety. Yeah. And the fifth time it happens in two years, you're like, oh... Oh. Another roadblock. I guess I'm going to be late home again. The worst was thinking, oh man, they're going to delay my bus. Yes. <laughs> Don't go to Croydon. That's the gist of it. Mm. Right. I right. believe. So that's on to me. Turn. Yes. Yeah, just have a look. Listen, I left you a lot, a lot there. Just take the whole thing. Because <laughs> if there's any bit left, I know that you skimmed out. Yeah, no, keep true. going. Keep going. No, keep going. <laughs> keep enjoying it. Come on. Yep. I can still see sauce on that plate, boy. Eat it up. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. <laughs> so, what's going to get really weird is all mm. the sauces may go into each other and we end up having this weird mm. new sauce. Okay, starting out with an easy question for you. Mm. What is your IQ? Mm -hmm. And what is, what is your personality test according to the Big Five and MBTI? No, the Mears Brig Indicator test. Right, you may need mm. to explain to people. What's the Big Five? I have no idea. Well, we're not we're answering gonna, that part. <laughs> we're going to go with the M. So, MBTI, yeah. IQ, that is actually a really fun one because my parents, for various reasons, made me take a whole bunch of IQ tests when I was a teenager mm -hmm. and a kid. They weren't but more stupid. The way, yeah. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the way these tests are worked out, it's actually like each test... There's different IQ tests, which yeah. will obviously give you different results. But also, you test someone at different ages, they're going to get different results as well. Yeah. Um, so, depending on what your IQ level is... Uh, sorry, well, depending on what age you are and what test you're doing, your IQ level on paper yeah. could be all over the shop by, like, a, quite a lot. 
Um, so I've had IQ tests that have said, I think the lowest one I got to my IQ was 136. Mm -hmm. And the highest one I got, as opposed, not to, not including like online test your IQ things, actual on paper ones. Mm -hmm. The highest one that I got was actually quite hilarious. Mm -hmm. And it was the test that made my parents stop stop you know, giving me these IQ tests because I think in secret part of it was because everyone in the family had to do them I think partly in secret was they wanted to show that they were smarter than me mm. and the test this particular test they did um, not only did it say this is your IQ yeah but it also came <clears throat> at the bottom it had like this means you are smarter than X percentage of people right. um, but it was, as we found out later, it was auto-rounded by Excel um, to one decimal place. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem with that, as you can probably see coming, is that when you get into the upper echelons of IQ, there's a very, you're talking about margins of percent. Yeah. So, say, the lowest one, 136. Mm -hmm. Most of them, high 140s, low 150s, something like that, a few higher up. This one... I don't know quite why, uh, maybe because I was actually taking it seriously or I was just fed up and filling in the answers aggressively, but it came back with an IQ of about 100, and, I think it was 179. Um, but because that's like, actually, I, so, I don't actually believe it. I don't think, I no. think that's breaking the scale. Cause yeah. The IQ is based on the amount of people, isn't it? Yeah, but this is the, like, it, I mean, this is why you don't take IQ yeah. seriously. Um, but, you know, it came back with a score of 179, however they calculated it. But because that is like on the far, 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 far end of the bell curve, it's like you would be smarter than like 99.99995% mm -hmm. of people. I mean, they'd still, given there's like, what, 8 billion people in the world, there'd mm -hmm. still be maybe a couple of hundred that people smarter than mm -hmm. you. But as I said, because the they're not going to put like sixteen decimal places on their wonderfully yeah. formatted certificate, so it's rounded to one decimal place, and it it automatically rounded it to one hundred percent because it was you know, it was above ninety nine point nine five. Um, so then I had this certificate that said you are smarter than one hundred percent of people in the world. I was like, that means I'm the smartest Isn't person on the planet. planet. Well, there it is. There's your answer. He's the yeah. smartest person on the planet. <laughs> and then I spent. Admittedly, this was like when I was I was like in the, my late teens. I then, as a late teenager would, spent the next two or three weeks prancing around with this bit of paper in my pocket. And every time my parents asked me to do something, I, or, uh, I'd say no. Yeah. And I'm like, no, because it's a stupid thing to do. And they'd be like, how, how dare you say that? It's like, well, I'm smarter than everyone else okay. on the planet, therefore yeah. I know better than you. That is funny. Um, that usually did go down. Yeah, I don't think they appreciate it. So they never did it again? Shockingly, no. Wow, I couldn't complete why. Hmm. And then after a few weeks, rather sensibly, my granddad took that certificate away. Because he said, if you keep that, you're just going to annoy everybody in your life forever. So I'm taking it away for your own good. <laughs> Do you know how he burned it? Um, well, considering that earlier this year he passed away, we're still going through the I'm papers. Still, I am not it may still be there. Test. There's uh, proof I'm a genius in here somewhere. <laughs> so yeah, if you want yeah. to if you want to follow the weird the weird shenanigans of IQ tests, I'm either the smartest person on the planet or kind of middling of the pack for above average IQs or somewhere in between likely one of those <laughs> one of those things <laughs> interesting well what's next in the terms of hot wings we have uh, hot sauce for the rest mm. of it it looks beautiful it's got a little chicken on it garlic fresno edition by the heatonist I mean oh yeah that one wasn't too bad was it that just was nice fine. and tasty that was just a tasty hot sauce mm. We, oh, and we also have all our re chosen remedies. Oh, we forgot to mention it. We have, we have what we believe is the cure. Mm -hmm. um, we'll also, go. there's a running theory that I, I wanted to try out in, in this, is that milk chocolate mm -hmm. um, isn't as good as white chocolate in terms of getting rid of spiciness. So we're going to find that out through the course of the episode. So yeah, um, we've got water and milk for refreshment. You've got uh, beer as one of your potential cures. Every Irishman knows... The cure is always a bishop's finger. <laughs> <laughs> and there goes the monetization. <laughs> the monetization. Uh, we've also yeah. got barbecue Pringles on your side. Um, and then down here, we've got a couple of glasses of milk. Cake. Um, some angel cake. I love that cake. Um, some minions squishies. We do. 
and some beef flavored crisps, which I think are there more as a snack, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, they're a cure. That's why we bought them. It's in the budget. There is some ice cream as well somewhere, but there is. we're not going to bring that out until not later. For, not for a while. Okay. Right. I believe it's time I have my, my wing. Yes. <clears throat> also, incidentally, um, when these uh, sauces arrive, they arrive in box, paired boxes, and it just says one and two on the outside. There's no indication on inside which one is one and which one is two. So we've arranged them in left to right we have. each time. We've decided. So we may be going around this slightly odd ways round, but yeah. it will be roughly it's increasing fine. in heat. It's fine. All right. I'm Just in go. case someone's like, eh, you got the last two in the wrong order. It's like, well, we'll find out. <laughs> oh, look at that perfect half. Mm. <laughs> a little bit fell off. <laughs> okay, a little bit fell off. Wait, we can cure this. Perfect. This is a fairly runny sauce. It is a runny sauce. Which one is it? The classic. Classic hot sauce. Lots of very large bits in it. Mm. Hmm. So your question is, how awkward is Drac when running around museum ships pointing out all the small things and doing random presentations to the normals? <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good question. Um, I think when we, um, for most days that we were on the America trip in particular, we've done other filming before, it wasn't mm. so bad, but we were distracted a lot. First of all, it's a new country. I haven't really been there and done anything in particular there before, no. so that but, part was fun. Yeah, I've been there a couple of times when I was an early teenager, but that's very that different it. from being there as an adult. Um, but I do think when we got on those ships, there was so much there, and also so many people that constantly were being just stopped and like, look at this thing! And so we were like going inside these places we can't really talk about on camera. Mm. Um, I think that served as a big distraction, but uh, Alex himself certainly can get distracted. <laughs> without even having anything interesting there. Um, for instance, we were looking at some cannonballs and mm -hmm. things like that, and suddenly we had uh, six million Chinese tourists come in, and he <laughs> gave a very brief presentation. Um, and I say brief, it was an hour and a half. Um, <laughs> so I was just sitting there with the camera, looking at his batteries, going, OK, well, I guess I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> um, then I did some, um, I did some translation for one of the Chinese mm. kids that was there because they yeah. didn't understand what you were saying. So I had to quickly look up in Chinese what cannonball is. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, how do I teach naval history to a Chinese kid? <laughs> but basics, like real proper basics. So that was also fun. But I think, honestly, we both get incredibly distracted on trips like this. Mm. I mean, yeah. it happened when we went to Liverpool. Yeah, We just um, talked talk about so much garbage on that trip. <laughs> we go we go into all these things with wonderful plans about what we want to shoot and when and how, and it never happens. It's like the, after the first five minutes in, it's just like, ooh, shiny. I'm like, Alex, look at this. And he's like, Elliot, look at this. <laughs> we're like, what were we doing today? <laughs> oh. We're professionals. That's what we're trying to tell you. Right, so then it's good, my good turn, question. isn't it? It is your turn, yep. Right. I don't know why I'm looking at my notes. It's your question. <laughs> I'm just going to scoop all of this. Just, just, just do a little bit of scoop. Do a bit of scoop. There you go. All right. Have you been anything? Have you been anything mm. other than model ships? That's not what I was saying. Have you done built. anything? Oh, Maybe. built. See, there we go. Two hot sauces in, and I'm drunk. Mm. Have mm. you built anything other than model ships? If so, what? Um. Hmm. This is a really crunchy one. Not the snarls, surely. <laughs> no, just a mini for that. Yeah, they are kind of, they got like lots of batter yeah. around them still. That one actually, that was quite nice. It was a bit sweet, that sauce. Yeah, I wouldn't, nothing to talk home about, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, it's just a nice sauce. Uh, so, building things, yes. Um, assuming you mean models, as opposed to anything else, um, then... I think they asked models, yeah. yeah. Then yes, I've built an awful lot of model stuff. Um, as a kid, I built Lego because who doesn't? Awesome. Um, I've still got tons of it in boxes. Um, I started out with various kits, and then I started customizing the kits, and then I started building ships entirely of my own design. Um, then um, I mean, I've built loads of forty k stuff, Titanicus stuff, Battle of Gothic stuff. Dystopian Wars, yeah. Firestorm Armada, um, what else have I constructed at various points? 
Just think of all the stuff I've got sitting on shelves. There's so much stuff. I think the answer has mm. been answered quite well because that's already like more yeah. than three separate models. Oh, various Airfix kits. Um, yeah. You know, Spitfire, Jinkers 88s, most, mostly propeller-driven stuff, the occasional jet. Um, just think other models. There, there's tons of little various wargaming things that I've bought mainly because I like the models. I just want to put them together. I don't, don't necessarily have much intention yeah. of playing <clears> various <throat> things. Um, yeah, excluding model ships, I think that's that's probably all the different. Oh, um, of course, I don't know they're all ships. Never mind. I uh, <laughs> say all the model game stuff, but that's all. That it's is also, all ships. Also ships. Um, yeah, I think in terms of models, that probably covers everything. But that's before we get into like you know action figures and. and well, I built a series of medieval siege weapons scale model ones um from medieval kits okay that does sound cool do you still have those yes oh, yeah, okay I've got well, trebuchet on a gerbalista um I did not know battering that. ram i didn't notice you had a trebuchet yeah it's hiding at the top of the shelf with all the enterprises <sighs> see i only have yeah. i have this boy yeah. with with us currently but and then i collect a bunch of models as well yeah that build so yeah hmm Okay, Good so question. we're on to source. Three. We are on to source number three, and this is called Hoffs. Whatever that means. What does that mean? Ho Hoss sauce. House sauce. The, Spelt the German way. Yes, house sauce. Um, and is there any flavour? Anything with the flavour on this? Oh, there's a side. Oh, here you go. Chilies, red jalapeno, habanero, chipotle, vinegar, clover honey, salt, garlic, black mustard seed. Dill and just spices. Wow, very specific. Made by um, Hoff and Pepper LLC from Chattanooga, Tennessee. <gasps> Beautiful. Okay, this one already you can tell is spicier because of how runny it is. And how dark oh, it is. Yeah, look at that. Oh Ooh, my goodness. Oh my God. <laughs> I really wanted to like that. <laughs> Surely we're not having that. <laughs> no, just take what you feel comfortable. Okay. With. I mean, we're only on source three, to be honest. But, I, yeah. I'll probably be fine. Something like the other ones. Okay. okay. Up you go. <clears throat> Stomach, be ready. I'm gonna go for this one. Thin mm. boy. <laughs> Don't right. call me on that. And then <laughs> the question that you will be answering once you've uh, finished eating this one is gonna be, what is the most embarrassing drac moment? Hmm. Very chewy. Mm -hmm. Certainly could be better. But I don't think it's that spicy. I went straight to tongue with that one as mm. well. Um, hmm. What's the most embarrassing drag moment? Um, any this is time... the part where you remember I pay him. <laughs> I'm just thinking, yeah. <laughs> Not that it was going to make any difference, I think. Not really. I'm just gonna think of something tame. <laughs> Some, something pub publishable. <laughs> yeah, something we can talk about. Um, any time he drove <laughs> the RV, because <laughs> occasionally he'd be like, uh, "Drac, this is a, a one-way street." <laughs> like, oh crap! <laughs> um, almost backing into things and crashing. Just casual speeding on the highway. Pretty embarrassing stuff. Um, it took a few days to get used to that RV, to be fair. It did, yeah. Yeah. Because you know, when, when you're driving, different people have different ways of lane keeping. I've re and I realised, like, probably about four hours into the drive, my normal lane keeping is this subconscious thing, because obviously in the UK we drive on the right-hand side, um, of having the divider lines on the road coming past just, like, there in your mm -hmm. peripheral vision. Yeah. And so... If I wasn't concentrating hard for the first few days, I'd find myself beginning to unconsciously drift to that position. The problem is if you're in a left-hand drive vehicle, that means if you're lucky, you end up straddling two lanes and everybody gets very angry with you. And if you're unlucky and you're in the slow lane anyway, yep. you end up going onto the hard shoulder and then you suddenly you're in a giant 30-foot box that's yeah. shaking to pieces. Or off the side of a bridge. It, yeah. it really depends. That's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> 
Um, there's probably a few other things. I mean, there's honestly, there's so much to choose from. It's, mm. it's really hard to nail <laughs> down exactly which one I want to talk about, but I think for now that mm. one will suffice. Yeah, I mean, there's that time I took a sword to the face from you, but it's pretty embarrassing. we won't talk about we'll that. We'll talk about that. We'll Not just, here anyway. What we'll do is we'll keep mentioning it in videos. Yeah. We'll never, te we'll never the, tell the story. <laughs> it's the noodle incident. Yeah, yeah, we'll never tell you guys. You don't deserve it. Right, and then there's my, my one. You just full mouth that. Mm. That poor chicken died for that. Mm. Right. Do you feel if there were ship types retired too early? Mm. I'll ask that one again. Mm. Do you feel if there were ship types retired too early that could have been brought to the modern era with some slight design changes? Mm. That's quite nice, actually. Mm. Um. It's not a comment to the question, is it? No. <laughs> Um, yeah, ship types that were retired too early and that could have been modernised, yes, yes in theory, um, but it depends which <coughs> kinds. Um, so as some people may know, it's like I've said before, in theory, if the Royal Navy could persuade the government to keep Vanguard operational, even if she was in reserves, operational and continuously modernised, she would have been of a huge amount of help in the Falklands. Because not so much when they're out in the middle of the ocean, but when they're in San Carlos water, they have huge problems with the Argentinians coming in because all the missile systems are locking up because they're overloaded with targets from all the radar bouncing back off of the islands. Um, now, if you had a slightly modernised Vanguard, like a 1950s era, early 50s era mm. modernised Vanguard, where they've taken off all the 40 mil, well, not necessarily all the 40 mils, just taken off some, and maybe replaced the 5.25s with 3-inch automatic, uh, then you would have had a ship covered in medium and heavy anti-aircraft guns with radar that probably couldn't reach all the way down San Carlos water anyway and wouldn't be overloaded by land contacts at which point you'd have this incredibly lethal anti-aircraft platform which would chew up A4s and so forth quite happily mm. and could provide, you know, shore-based fire support with its 15-inch guns and the bombs and exocets that they were lobbing at various Royal Navy ships at the time. It's got the armour to either tank them completely or even if they're not necessarily going to tank them entirely, at least severely mitigate the damage because, you know, 45, 50,000 tons mm -hmm. of battleships are a lot harder to sink than three, 4,000 tons of frigate. So that would be one singular vessel, I think, definitely. Um, so the answer is probably a lot. Mm. But the, the, thing, the main thing is, when it comes to retiring <clears throat> ships early and then allowing them to be modernised, is that they have to survive this kind of er early period where the modernised systems in radar and missiles yeah. are really big and heavy. So you need to have ships that were kind of in some ways a little bit oversized for their time in order for them to survive and then people have to justify the cost of it. should we rebuild this ship or mm -hmm. and with the compromises inherent or should we just build a new class of ships so there's very few ships that actually fall into that category um you know the, the des moines class for instance are really big mm -hmm. for heavy cruisers could probably afford to take a bunch of upgrades they've got the whole volume certainly yeah. to do it but something like, say, the Baltimores, Oregon cities, although they're quite large um, for treaty period cruisers, and they're obviously above treaty displacement, they're not, I don't think they've got enough space to make it all the way into the modern era. Some of them were modernised anyway, but they tended to not last yeah. too much longer afterwards. Um, so, yeah, because of the budgetary considerations of the 1930s, it's very difficult to find specific ship class. And go, yeah, this is big enough to have lasted considerably longer than when they were retired. Um, there, there, there'll be a few here and there, but hmm. yeah. So that, that would be my choice. That would be your choice. Good answer. Mm. Also very interesting question mm. if you've ever asked that. That was, um, that was a good right. one. So on to Source 4 after a quick break to change the batteries and the camera. And for me to be able to pour my beer, mm -hmm. which was incredibly important. So this one is called Los Calientes. Uh, which I can say because I'm half Bolivian. I can't. Being racist. <laughs> if I say it, it's incredibly racist. Mm. So this has green serrano, applewood smoked green serrano, which I think is the same thing, just tastes more like cheese, um, <laughs> orange habanero, and then a bunch of other stuff that is not related to 
chilies. Mm. Including apricot for some bizarre reason. I'm not entirely Why sure. Why would that be in there? Is that common? They put like weird fruits and things. I don't know. <laughs> you don't eat hot sauces? No. I thought you were really Spanish. No. And you're not Bolivian this whole time or something? But my mum's true Bolivian and like full Bolivian and she almost got killed by one when we went to Bolivia because they just, they served us a, a bunch of um, beef steak with chilies on it. And she basically died. She ate one. She was like, because they're little things one? like this. And she was one? like, she, she just ate it. And then as she, as she swallowed it, the waiter came hurtling over, um, basically screaming that what you were supposed to do with those things is pick it up and just stroke it over the meat before you Whoops. ate it. And yeah, if you ever want to see someone who's Bolivian brown still go full red and gasp for air, that was the day to be wow. Right, anyway, so mm. while you're chowing down on this mysterious green one, mm. um, we have a another question. Um, if you and Drac had nine-foot rowboats each, equipped with bronze rams and a bucket of golf balls to throw at each other, which one of you would be king of the pond and which one would be swimming home? Incredibly interesting question. I mean, I think we're both pretty good with rowboats. Mm -hmm. Have used them quite a lot, going through Thailand. Went through most of Thailand on a rowboat. Mm -hmm. You uh, you have a channel about boats, so I'm pretty sure you're more than capable of using a rowboat. I'm I'm aware of how to use oars. Put it that way. Okay, you've used oars. Hmm. How good are you with throwing golf balls? See, this is the problem. It's like navigating the boat to ram. I think I'd be pretty good at. I've an intentional, not intentionally for legal purposes, rammed several people while on trips to the Norfolk Broads and so, so forth. So you're good at ramming? Yes. Okay, that's settled. But, um, yeah, when it comes to throwing, if you're within 10 feet of me, be very afraid. If you're beyond 10 feet from me, my th intentional throwing arm is basically one of the most useless known to mankind. If you're, if you're 20 foot away from me and I aim for you, you can guarantee that one place I will not hit is you. Um, okay, so I'll win. That's the answer to the question. Um, yeah. I can throw, and I can use a rowboat quite well. I've done it quite extensively for many, many yeah. years. Whereas, the, bizarrely enough, when I don't aim, mm. that's when I get absolutely spot-on perfect hits at very, very long ranges. So your plan is to not aim at me when we're in the water? Yeah, well, at one point I almost hospitalised my middle brother, purely by accident, because we were in a playground, and uh, we were throwing bits of bark at each other, as you do, just because it was funny. And... Um, he jumped down off of one of the big uh, play sets. I jumped down at the other end, grab, just reached down blindly to mm. grab what I thought was a bit of big bit of bark and just overhead lobbed it, <clears throat> thinking, oh, it'd be funny if it just goes past, because I knew how bad a shot yeah. I was. I was like, it'd be funny if it just goes past him and he gets scared when it comes zipping past. And then as I let go, some part of my brain caught up with me and went, that was heavier than a bit of bark. And I looked up and I saw to my horror about a four inch lump of red granite oh, no. sailing up through the sky and my brother running away, obviously gone to the Prometheus school of running away in a straight oh, line. Oh yeah, straight line, yeah. Um, and he was probably about 40 feet away and I was just watching this arc down. I was like, oh no, please, no, please, no, please, no. Straight to the back of the head, right just below oh, wow. the curve of the skull. And if you've ever, you know, you know, sometimes in the movies where you see someone just go spread eagle. Oh wow in the air and down and out that was it was i couldn't have done it better like if i tried that a hundred more times and the entire time that rock was on its way down i was just like please don't hit please don't hit please don't hit please don't. oh i'm in a lot of trouble and i've killed someone <laughs> um mm -hmm. he was fine in the end it just a bit of concussion because i think so, actually it was dropping so hard it kind of just clocked him and then skidded off rather than properly smacking the back of his skull well Many years ago in nondescript Asian country, mm. I um, was using a rowboat and I found a bunch of people stuck that accidentally <laughs> rowed directly into a very small island Whoops. that just hit the sea level. Oh, they right, couldn't yeah. leave. Like a sandbar type. So I was just like going around them mm. and I asked them if they needed any help. And they were so scared of the water, they literally couldn't move. So I had to get out of my rowboat and swim over to their rowboat and then pull the rowboat out of the island and then swim mm. back to my rowboat. <laughs> And even then, they were just, like, turning around in circles over and over and over again. So basically, yeah, give me some ballistic weaponry and I'll be fine. But, yeah, throwing competition, I think Elliot's got yeah. this. 
I can I can throw you. Yeah. Unless I just happen to be standing, sitting there, and randomly throwing golf balls into the sea. At which point, I'll just get perfect hole. Yeah, you throw them downwards, it'll go up and land directly yeah. in my head. Yeah. I think the question would be more interesting if we had guns, ballistics, <laughs> on a rowboat. Yes. Who would win? Um, yes, yeah, so let's give the Irishman an arm a light and find out what I happens. Mean, <laughs> I mean, we've, we've already determined I can shoot. Yes. That is already on mm. paper. So who knows what could happen? <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> snipe myself mm. and Alex. Mm. Right, so then it's um, uh, your turn to ask the question while I sh carefully shuffle mm, this yes. sauce around. How do you feel about American food? And what's the worst hotel you've unfortunately stayed in? Mm. This is really nice, actually. It's a nice one. Mm. It's not really that spicy. No. I mean, it's got a little bit of a hint of spice to it that's a bit more than the others. But, but not, like, not like bad at all, really. No. To be honest, I'm drinking this more just to palate cleanse all the KFC spices than anything else. Yeah, the KFC chicken. And when it's colder, oh boy. <laughs> mm. It is not as good. Um, so, best or worst hotels and what was it? Um, and the other part of the question, which I don't forget. Oh, how do you, how do you feel about American food? Okay. American food is, first of all, makes you put on a lot of weight. Um, I mean, we all put on weight when we, we went did. on the America we trip, and, quite a few pounds. and we were spending like eight, ten hour days walking around ships, so we were not being physically mm. inactive. Um, yeah, it was um, very bad for the self-esteem, mm. you know, just <laughs> waking up in the morning going, this wasn't there beforehand. <laughs> on the other hand, the fact I think like 80% of our diet was fast food probably True. didn't help. help. <laughs> um, but no, in terms of favourite American, or what do you think of American food? Um, Portion sizes are definitely more in line with Fan what I'd like. Fantastic, yep. Um, but, I think I said this in the live stream when I came back from America, um, like, you can get a really good steak in the UK, and you can get a really good steak in the US. But in my experience, in terms of meat at least, what the US does really well, that you basically, at least in my experience, can't find in the UK, is chicken. You, the US does so many different kinds of chicken, it's true. Um, there was a, we ate mostly chicken the entire time. Yeah. In a desperate attempt not to put on too much weight. <laughs> for all the good that We see is. the irony. In mm. it. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, for the, the food I experienced, I actually generally liked it quite a bit. Um, I had never had biscuits and gravy before, and I had a deep, a deep rooted suspicion of the concept because of what biscuits and gravy would have in the UK context. But actually, that was really nice as well. Um, and yeah, American Southern Barbecue. Oh, that was good. Yeah, yeah. with um, Matthias and yeah, Mary the and, C and Arsenal guys. Yeah, that was good. That was really good as well. Um, so yeah, American food. I'm I'm generally in favour of as long as I can find something that burns off all the calories yeah. afterwards. Um, but in terms of best worst hotels, um. I mean, the easy go-to would probably be to reference some hotel when I was in Bolivia or Kenya or somewhere like that. Um, but then again, they are third world countries, so what do you expect? <laughs> um, I mean, I spent a month in Kenya when my dad had to go out there when I was a teenager for work purposes. And we were in the middle of a locust plague. And every single day, because they had these like slat multi slatted windows that open and shut, mm -hmm. And they never shut properly. So we went back to our apartment in the hotel every day and me and my two brothers would have to go on a genocidal killing spree where we'd have to wipe out 60 to 100 locusts just so that there oh, were wow. locusts swarming in our apartment every day, every night. That actually, okay, that sounds terrible. But the thing is, I wouldn't list that as a terrible experience for two reasons. One, you know, as what well, I was probably... 11 at the time and mm -hmm. my brothers were younger we thought it was a great experience running around with like we, we had favored weapons like i had a rolled up tv guy my brother had a rolled up cereal box <laughs> and so forth so it's like and we weren't like squishing them we we're just hitting them hard enough to kill so we just thought it was like great exercise before bed to it's a bonding experience and it wasn't exactly that like they're going to run out so the, what you're trying to say is the worst hotel experience for you was the best hotel experience <laughs> kind of yeah and, and plus i got to meet like baby chameleons, full-size chameleons, and a bunch of geckos That's moved cool. in about halfway through the experience into our room. And they were, we were just like, yep, yeah, you live on the ceiling and eat as many locusts as you'd like. Um, but 
Yeah, I, I actually like that. I think, to be honest, if I was going to say if the single worst hotel experience mm. of expectation versus reality, mm -hmm. it's probably on the America trip, when, the one we stayed in in San Diego, because that was listed as a hotel convention center. Mm -hmm. So I was expecting, okay, well, if it's a convention center hotel, it's going to be quite big. Um, if it's a convention center, it's got to have certain standards, otherwise... You know, it wouldn't have be able to get people coming back to it and staying there. And I think it's probably the most blatant example of blatant lies in advertising that I've seen in a long time. Because when I showed up, the entrance was literally just a glass door in the side of a building that had a bunch of other businesses running down the front of it. And the lift or elevator, for those of you in the States, was like four foot by four foot <clears throat> and rattled and groaned. There was no convention centre of any sort in evidence in the four floors that made up the hotel. And then when we got to the room, um, you guys had just flown home from yep. uh, L.A. So you're aware of the size of suites that we had in mm -hmm. L.A. Yep. So the San Diego Hotel cost 20% more. Mm -hmm. And the total suites, so, well, hey, suites, I bathroom and yeah, bedroom. And bedroom. Um, the total size that we had in San Diego was about the size of the bathroom that we had in LA. The aircon sounded like someone had taken the jet engine out of the sickest 727 and just stuck it in there. So it was almost deafeningly loud. And to cap that all off, um, so you had, basically had to put up with either melting in the heat or being deafened by the aircon. And the walls appeared to be made of pasteboard and hope because you could hear everything that was going on three rooms over in each direction. And it was more of a kind of hotel, it turned out, where people just go <laughs> for like four hours on end at three in the morning for no apparent reason. We're going to clip that. Yeah. And other people just like screaming at each other. And I was That's just hilarious. like, the, the only thing that stopped me going to find another hotel at that point after the first night, was that, like, we only have one more night in this hotel. <laughs> yeah. I um, mean, that is a pretty awful experience. Yeah. I'm going to very briefly, quickly share mine. Because mm -hmm. my worst hotel experience was the time I was in Hong Kong, and mm -hmm. the guy outside my hotel got murdered. That would be a little bit of a negative. Yeah, we had, a, we, they had, like, their version of SWAT team, homicide, mm -hmm. and every policeman I've ever seen in the planet <laughs> outside my door. And I opened the door. They were like, go back in your house or leave the hotel. I went... Cool. Mm. So me and my friend, we, we literally just, <laughs> Went we left. We were like, okay, we'll come back later. And we came back up in a bit, a few hours, and everything was cleared. Everything was gone. Tape gone, police mm. gone. Doors were removed off of that entire mm. area. Police tape was put up. And that was the end of it. Fair enough. That's probably the worst one. The hotel yeah. itself actually wasn't that bad. Yeah, to be fair, no one has been murdered in a hotel that I was in. During the same time that you were there, yeah. That anyone can prove. <laughs> <laughs> were you there in Hong Kong this whole time? Mm. Right, so we're we on to source number five. Hot heads. Hot heads official revolutionary. Wait, wait. Roasted wait. bell and scorpion. Oh, um, look, they have a heat indicator. Okay. What does this mean? It's mild to hot and it indicates hot. Which is, you know, I mean, okay, okay but. Is that, hot in what is sense? Is that five out of five? Is it five out of ten? Is it. And, you know, we've got. Five more to also, go. Also, the name is hot sauce. You'd think, yeah. of course it's hot. I mean, I've heard of scorpion pepper. Well, I'm hoping it's scorpion pepper, not just actually straight up Does scorpion. That have anything to do with Dwayne the Rock Johnson? Oh, it's a scorpion, scorpion pepper. Oh, so it has everything to do with Dwayne the Rock Johnson's uh, appearance. <laughs> I was like, for me, I was like, why, why, why have they put scorpions into this, <laughs> into this sauce? Those poor scorpions. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of extra sting. <laughs> hey, good news. Right, so over to you. I think the hard part is having to eat the entire piece of chicken. Yeah. Honestly, do we do we want to cut the amount? Of, we don't have to finish the whole chicken because finishing the whole chicken is is it's making my stomach feel so full. Are you okay finishing the whole pieces of chicken, or do you want? Okay, to... Well, either one, I don't mind. Just as long as if you if you only want to take a bite, the bite with the sauce with the bite with the sauce on the side. Yeah. yeah, just checking the question. Okay, let's go. This kind of looks like a like a hedgehog mm. or like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the hedgehog wing. Let us consume. So, your question um, is, was there any time when you'd be checking something or taking a shot 
and then turn around to find out that Drac had wandered off completely. Yes, every time. I mean, um, <laughs> I do have uh, some examples of this. I think on Battleship New... Ooh. Has that got a bit of a bite to it? Oh, that one's got a bit of a bite to it, for sure. Must be the scorpion. <laughs> <laughs> You're currently inside there, sticking mm. my mouth. Hmm. Oh, it's okay. It's okay, we're good. I mean, certainly that one had a bit more, mm. more of a stab. Which is what you would hope, considering we're going up the scale. We're going up the scale, okay. Hmm. Right, any time we're setting up a shot and Alex has wandered, I mean, mm. we do that. Every time we're filming a shot and Drac has walked away. Yeah, every time. Mm. Um, we've, had, uh, we've had shots being lined up and you've been plugged in with a mic. And then suddenly um, something whizzes by the ship mm. and you're like, oh, look at this, it's a little <laughs> tugboat or something. <laughs> and suddenly now we're talking about tugboats for 15 minutes. And I'm like, hey, look at this. We just get distracted again. And now I'm wandering off. <laughs> um, which is basically the gist of how we work. We wander off until at some point we film the right things. Yes. And then we edit it together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the unstoppable force. Mm. But yeah, I think Battleship New Jersey was one that you were particularly distracted by. Yeah, although to be fair, when Ryan's just like, effectively, here's the keys to an Iowa class battleship. I was just like, let's go in all the weird places. We went to all the weird places in that ship. Yeah, we went to... Um, mm. Gregorian chanting in the space between the outer hull and the armor belt. <laughs> that was fun, yeah. Um, I threw a... I think we look half dead in that, though, because it's like, it's the space between the outer hull and the armor belt. There is no air con, and it was a very hot day. Yeah, we're like, <sighs> yeah, and I know, I know for a fact, there are some days we look terrible. Because mm. <laughs> <It was laughs> I haven't been able to shower, because we're in the RV, we're not mm. hooking up to any water. Oh, that last one, by the way, mm. it really gets to your stomach real okay. quick. Right, well, let's, if you, you line up my question, oh, and I'm going to uh, that was an interesting line up certainly my... the spiciest one so far. Mm. How was your university experience? Mm. Okay. The spice okay? Yeah, that's got a bit of spice to it. It does, doesn't it? Mm. A little bit of a kick. A bit more of a kick than the others. Um, university. So, for those of you who are unaware, I went to Kingston University. Um, it's where all the scum go. Right? <laughs> we'll, we'll probably come back to cover a little bit of this with a few, another question that's lined up later on. Um, so, at yeah, Kingston Uni, civil engineering, ostensibly at least, mm. that's what the degree says. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> I actually enjoyed it quite a bit, but it was also... What, believe it or not, yes I know I'm British, but I don't drink tea very much at all. It's actually what put me off drinking tea or coffee on a regular basis. Well, that's got a bit of a bite to the back of your throat. It's weird after, isn't it? Yeah. It's not the front where the sauce actually went, it's but just there. in the back of the tongue. Just imagine yeah. how much worse the last one's going to be if we end up... We'll having... find out. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, yeah. It, it was an interesting experience because the class started off with about 140 people first year. And very quickly, it became evident that a bunch of people were not there to actually, you know, do the end of the course. You're they trying were... to tell me people went to university to not study? I'm I don't know why they've cho chosen an engineering degree of all things, but they <laughs> seem to expect to just have the university life and everyone else do their work for them. So I very quickly found a couple of other guys who also took the degree course somewhat seriously. So we made up a, a, a very eclectic bunch. We had an American guy, an Iranian guy and me, who's half British, half Bolivian. Um, and we basically ended up doing pretty much all our group projects together because the three of us were the only people that we knew would actually, you know, turn in our part of the group yeah. assignment on time um, and vaguely paid attention in class, even if we did spend half of them doing Sudoku or smuggling, like, footlong sandwiches in, out of Subway. Um, but, um, yeah, the, the re reason, coming back around, the reason that I turn out to not be a great tea or coffee drinker is first year, they were pretty much like me. It's like early morning lecture, first lecture of the day, bright and early, everyone's fine, mm -hmm. happy. Um, and then I think towards the end of first year, maybe beginning of second, they decided they were going to get involved in, you know, get, and get into British culture. So they're going to start drinking tea. Um, first from the canteen, then from thermos flasks. Mm -hmm. 
And then over second year and then into third, it went from bright and early in the morning to, okay, just give me a second, I need a cup of tea, to by third year, it was like, just don't even talk to me until I've had half a flask of tea. And I was like, oh, this is what caffeine addiction looks like. I, oh, do, I, see. I, I don't favour this. I want to be able to get up in the morning without <clears throat> having to pump my body full of chemicals. What uh, do you mean? <laughs> hey, don't knock it till you try it. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that's that's what put me off drinking tea and coffee because hmm. I wanted to just yeah, not be dependent on them. And also, if I was going to need a caffeine and sugar hit for it to actually have a significant effect rather than just you're still awake. I see. Yeah, but, but yeah, no, so gen- generally the university degree it, experience was quite good, but the class size dropped massively. Like we went from 100, somewhere between 120, 140 down to about 60 by second year, down to about 30 by the start of third year, and I think about two dozen of us actually graduated. Well, wow. so it was quite a um, quite an, quite a knockdown. There's quite a difference in people mm. that actually bothered continuing the whole thing. It's yes. Quite a lot. So, so um, you next. Asking me a question. Uh, yes, but that means we move on to another source. We've done the first five, haven't we? Yes, so it's now on to six. And then we check the batteries again. Good. Now, the way, they're all different colours as well. They are. It's like the most, the weirdest looking rainbow we could have made. <laughs> It's like a, it really is a disgusting rainbow. So this one is Senor Lecuja, Lecuja, I think. Yeah, Senor Lecuja, I think. Hot sauce. Senor Lechuga. <laughs> 0.718. This has adobo, whatever that is, black lime and ghost peppers. And it's batch two, bottle 5531 from Brooklyn. So they killed a pepper and it came back to life and died in this bottle mm, again. Yeah. A bunch of other peppers on the back. <laughs> Honestly, on the front, but never mind. Okay. Right, so over to you. That is me. Um, this is going to be the chicken that we're not eating piled because yeah. there's just so much chicken. Um, like, this is already double the amount that they have on a wing. Like, the <laughs> wing is like such a small amount. But no bones, so. No bones. Exactly. All the benefit. Mm-hmm. Oh, here we go. This is a terrible idea. <laughs> this is a te- Look at that. It's not the most terrible idea we have ever had. We've had, a, we've had pretty bad ideas. Mm. <laughs> And those don't air. <laughs> no. <laughs> For legal purposes, those ideas never nope. happen. <laughs> I feel like this is the one we start regretting it. Possibly. I mean, that that other one, it, it had a bite to it, but it, it didn't go beyond. It, it, was... yeah, it, it stuck around on your tongue, but it didn't go any further. Uh, I'm getting worried. All, All right. right. So, as you can assume, question number six for you is, how did you guys meet, and what was your favourite episode or... In, or Recording to film. Hmm. Just trying. Mm-hmm. A lot to chew. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like one of your cures? My cures are fine. It's not very spicy. Okay. It's so much chicken. Fair enough. I'm also having chicken. We had so much chicken before. I'm having chicken now. I feel like my body's got a mm. burst of chicken. <laughs> I'm good. What was the question? Um, <laughs> uh, how did you guys meet, and what was your favourite um, episode or filming location? Okay, real quick, easy to answer. Fav- favourite filming location: USS Constitution. Absolutely. I mean, you had a blast with the mm-hmm. fire cannons. Yeah. I took the slow mo shot of the main one going. Mm-hmm. We got awesome gifts. Do I have mm-hmm. it? They gave us. They gave me one of these. Oh yeah, the cartridge case. Oh yeah. yeah, that was awesome. I got the one that I fired. You got the one that you fired, yeah. So yeah, that's the thing. Um, how, was it do? how did we meet? I feel like that's more of a question that should be between me and Mrs. Track, but yeah. she's sensibly how, not doing this challenge. How did we meet? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't. I, I know it was through a mutual friend. Yes. The day, the year... Or the time, no clue. I think it was just a matter of, hey, here's this guy we know. And then we started talking, and then we haven't stopped since. Yeah, I think it's... The only thing I can remember is it it had to have been somewhere around the late 2000s. I know it was definitely 2014, 2015. I think it was earlier than that. I can't remember. 
Not it was a while ago. The yeah. fact is, we know each other, and it's been a long time. Yeah. I th we know for a fact it was between a mutual friend. Yeah. And one of my earliest memories of you is when you almost put a sword through my face. I did almost put a sword through your face, but we don't talk about that. No. Unless someone deliberately asks it. Yes. Until then, we'll just keep briefly mentioning <laughs> it. Yes. And I actually cut the whole answer out of that other thing. <laughs> I was like, you know what? Yeah. No. No, we're not going to talk about that. Right. Okay, so then I guess it's my turn to... And then your turn to select question <clears throat> six. It's everything's the back of the throat. Mm. Everything. Shuffle. Get some more. Look at... What, mm. What's this? Look how much time you've left over. What is this? <laughs> no, 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 but... but. I, there you go. That was fine. Hmm. Oh, easy question for you. Hmm. Can you swim? Are you any good at it? Sailor? Hmm. Okay, that one's got slightly oily taste to it. Yeah. <laughs> I can be honest hmm. with you, the aftertaste is way worse than the initial. I don't know. Because my like... stomach has, has immediately taken that in and rejected hmm. it. Yeah, because, like, at the moment, that's like done. It's just like uh -huh. slightly odd flavour, not a, mm -hmm. not as good a flavour as that one, in, at least in my taste. I suspect it'll come back later though. So yeah, anyway, I feel that now. Yeah. Um, can you swim? Can Brian? I swim? Um, yes, in theory, I can swim. Am I any good at it? No, not really. Um, and that's because I have a very, very low level of buoyancy. It's like there are some people who can just sit in the water, quite happily float. It's true. There are some people who, you know, they go in the backstroke or just float on their back and they'll have, they could just, you know, float halfway across the Atlantic and not notice. Um, I don't. I'm like 98, 99% negatively buoyant. Mm. So I've, I've, I've done a standing float in a swimming pool and the water comes up to here. Um, I've done a back float and there's literally just been, the water's been like this lapping up my nose and that's the only part of me that's above water so swimming yes i can swim but it's much more of a struggle for me than it is for most people because i'm constantly having to propel myself upwards for oxygen as well as forwards with the sole exception that because i sink so easily underwater swimming i'm really good at so i can do like 90 percent of a length underwater on an average mm -hmm. day and if I swim for a couple of weeks, I can do a full length. Um, and as any one of my friends or family who's been swimming with me will know, if we're in a swimming pool and it's not people doing lanes, almost inevitably you'll find like stealthy underwater dracks swimming underneath everyone and popping up to poke at random... sub -drack. Yeah, poke at random body parts. <laughs> oh, okay, look, listen, we are not condoning doing this yourself. <laughs> You can get sued for this. This is why you have goggles, so you know which body parts you're poking. <laughs> so you can deliberately get sued. <laughs> no, actually, well, knowing our friend group, if I did anything, I'd probably just get kicked in the face. Yes, yes, it's true. <laughs> um, so right. Yeah. So that was that wasn't actually too bad. I, I, I can uh, feel a little bit of uh, of a spite, but not too much. This one is chili lengua de fuego. I pronounced that mm. perfectly correct as well. I think, isn't it? Mm -hmm. the, uh, oh, no, wait, mm -hmm. that's that's what that is. It's the Botilla Fire. Mm -hmm. Botilla the Hun. Assorted super hot peppers and bitter orange for so no reason whatsoever. Is this the one my wife tried and then didn't have a good time with it? Um, yes. Yes, because it was seven and then... She... No, no. Was, was this one? Need... Right, so after a quick battery check... Thank goodness we did that. Did we introduce the sauce now, or is that... Yes, that's, that is in the... that's at least partially introduced. We'll find out in editing. Whoops. If not, a voiceover. Yes, because we found. Um, yeah. Yeah, we found we found the camera cut out half an hour. <laughs> this is gonna be a long video. Yeah. Okay. Who's who's what? Uh, who? It's your yours. Yeah, your turn to eat. And <sighs> you're on sauce number seven. I think after this sauce, I should probably go and get the ice cream. I think so. We do have the uh, glasses of milk, by the way. Okay, pass me my glass of milk, because I, I feel as if this is the moment we regret everything. I also have a feeling these glasses were not entirely clean, but... Why? They're beautiful. Did you wash them before? Of course I didn't, they're yours. 
Oh, there's little fluff, little bits of fluff oh there's fluff all in them. Oh, they probably were on the tray. Oh, ew. That's all right. It's just fluff. Won't do you any harm. Just make you... We're in the middle of eating incredibly hot sauces. I don't think a little bit of fluff is going to be too much of a problem. His hair's in them. No one. I'm going to wash this hair. Give me a second. Do you want another glass? Uh, no, because it's like half the milk. Fine. Screw it. Cut. Mm -hmm. Milk from... Mm. Where is this? Oh, well, that was where we got in Poland. Yes, it is. We went to Poland. And mm. definitely not Ukraine. Yes. Right. But for legal purposes, we did not cross the border and drive to Lviv. Um, no. Ah, oh, my poor little baby elbow. <laughs> the bishop's finger has hurt me <laughs> once again. Oh no. Who could have seen that one coming? <laughs> Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. One plate. There you go. Okay. So, the question for number seven is How long have you been active in cinematography dash being a cameraman? When I start working for you? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he did. Well, you did I did check ahead of time. That you I have, to, to I have taken a picture before. Mm. Um, no. So, predominantly, I'm a writer. And I was an English teacher for many years, and I worked in translation as well. Well, as a cameraman, I've always had an interest in cinematography, and I have quite the portfolio, which I'm not going to link, <laughs> of photos. And Alex knew about it, and he needed a cameraman. So actually full-time doing video work, um, editing and all that. Honestly, professionally, it's only since been working with Alex. Beforehand, it was all translation and writing. Yeah. Hope that answers your question. <laughs> right. So that means I ha that means I've got an accelerated path through onto this one. It means we can rush through this because I'm getting so full of chicken right now. <laughs> just as well. Just as well, we decided to do half bites at this stage. <clears throat> yeah, I think we definitely do half bites because that one's not spicy at all. Okay. Um, who'd win in a fight? One triplet sized tribal or her tonnage in tribal sized turpits? Triplets? Turpits. Turpits. Oh, I'm mispronouncing it completely. A turpit sized tribal or her or tonnage in tribal sized, sized turpits. Is. Um, I have a feeling I would give it to the tribal sized turpitses because um, a turpit sized tribal. Um, is basically turpits, but with without the secondary armament. Like so, four, four four twin gun mounts, pair of quad torpedo launchers, no secondaries. But at least if we're talking about mid to late service period turpits, when she's had quad torpedo launchers installed, um, you know her tonnage in tribal size turpits as well. That's going to be about twenty two to twenty four ships. Mm -hmm. All with eight twin gun. Uh, sorry, with four twin gun mounts and two quad torpedo launchers. So yeah, I mean, twenty-two of any almost anything is going to be a lot. Yeah, yeah it's like that's going to be a, a wall of skill twice over with the torpedoes. Um, so yeah, I think that the the swarm of uh, tribal sized turpitses would take Probably. that one. Hmm. Good answer. Yeah, that's weird actually. That's that that's got. A burn to it, yeah, but, but it's after. not bad. Also, way after. Mm. No, it's not too bad actually. Right, so then we, we are on the last to... three here. This is going to immediately yeah, accelerate. This is, this is where you start boring. This one is Da Bomb Evolution hot sauce. Ah, uh, red hot chilies have evolved, and sauce design is changing tandem. After traveling beyond insanity, we return to Ground Zero and found the final, which I think are all sauces they do. Um, Brutal heat from some of the hottest peppers known to mankind. Consume no. one drop at a time with extreme caution. Well, what? No. What? <laughs> you can't do this to me. We refuse this this safe, safety warning. Okay. Well, do two oh drops. Two drops. Two. It's like not even wanting to. Is it supposed to look like that? Okay, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Ah. I'm not sure you can describe them as drops. It's more of a paste. Um. That is actually what's going to come out of me after we film this. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with Just you. Just as well, they probably can't see that over the chicken. Probably not. You don't right. want to see that. So select a... Um... I'm going to put my 
my foamy, <laughs> hairy mm. milk <laughs> in front of me. Hey, that's our thing. We only have fluff milk on taste buds. That's what makes <laughs> us different to You have to find different hot ways ones. of foaming the milk up. <laughs> right. So. Let's find the smallest, easiest to bite piece of chicken. Immediately failed. <laughs> yeah. All right. There you go. <laughs> Taking the littlest dab. What do you mean the littlest dab? It said a drop. <laughs> yes, fine, 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 fine. As long as you absolutely swear you will take the rest of it. <laughs> that is half. <laughs> That's a very in, in generous interpretation of the word half, but never mind. That, yeah, that, that is half. <laughs> it's half oh. of something. <laughs> okay, we're going to try this one bite. All right. What you want to do is I'll double up the corner, then mm -hmm. we can just have a corner. Okay. Boom. There you go. <clears throat> Three, two, one, and then while he's eating, um, question eight is: When Drac is eating on trips, do you have trouble getting him into frame? Do you have to use drone shots? Is Drac a secret American? So me. Oh wow. Oh <laughs> crap. Mm. Is it indeed a dab on? You feel it more. Mm -hmm. it... <laughs> it burns a little. Oh god. <laughs> It's like a build-up. Well, you do have your cures to tell. I haven't had the hot <clears throat> chocolate buns yet. All the way. I'm not going for the beer. Beer feels ineffective. Oh my mm. goodness, that's really hot. <laughs> so you've got white chocolate, you've got milk, and various other things which I think will probably be less effective, but I can pass you some cake if you like. Mmm. Mmm. That is indeed a bomb. <laughs> it still burns. So, <sighs> so, do you have trouble getting me into frame when I'm eating? <laughs> if you could even think straight. <laughs> oh. Dude, you're gonna feel that one. Oh, my mouth is on fire. Give me a second. <laughs> Mm. And you only had one of the corners. I had, I, what I did was I doubled up on that yeah. corner that way. I didn't have to have the other bit. Yeah. Bless chicken. I feel like I can light a fire right now. Mm -hmm. No, I don't. That is a, That comes from the Battleship New Jersey video you did. Mm, in Hawaii. And I'm going to de debunk it right now. On camera for you. What's her name? Mm? What's the person's name that Libby. filmed it? Libby. <laughs> if that's your real name. <laughs> Who is a fantastic person, by Fantastic the way. person. I met her as well, actually. She's quite nice. Yeah, because she's short, she filmed it from a, her perspective. The problem is, <laughs> when you're really short and someone's a lot taller, you end up getting this almost distorted image. Plus the fact, I believe, she wasn't holding it directly straight, mm. but maybe slightly tilted. So what you end up happening is, this portion of his body is massive. Mm. More than it already is. <laughs> and then his head is smaller. Which is incredible that someone managed to make his head smaller, because... <laughs> That never happens. Yeah, that was that was the thing. Like when I was watching, like some of the comments <coughs> on the video were like, "Oh wow, Drax's been like hitting yeah, a but he has big it. time." But he has yeah. it. I was looking at it. I was like, "Yeah, but it's like my torso <sighs> looks the size of like a small continent, and my head is the size of a, a pin." Do we have paper towels? Um, I need to blow my nose. I think we did. There was a roll here. What happened to? Oh, it's on the desk. Oh, okay. Desk of destiny. So at the moment, no. <laughs> Damn it! Screw you. Um, I'll get him when we get the ice cream ahead of uh, Source 9. Uh, yeah, don't worry about it. Take your time. Right, well, you get to ask a question while I'm... Uh... Yeah, I'm still putting myself together. <sighs> That's a soup. All right. What made you interested in naval history? What kind of education did you get to be... So you, uh, so you get to be where you are now? First kick, not bad, but oh boy, you wait. Any second now is gonna, <laughs> it's gonna get real bad, buddy. There it is. Gets worse. It's like a build-up. Okay, yeah, it's is... like a build-up, buddy. It just keeps going. <laughs> to the moon. Okay, yeah. Right. <laughs> you weren't lying. No, I wasn't. This is, um... 
Oh. Answer the question. <laughs> I asked you a question. You answer it right now. I don't care your state of mind. That's all right. The back of the throat. Oh, man, that's bad. Oh. I'll answer it again. What made you interested in naval history? Mm. What kind of education did you get so you could be where you are now? I kind of answered the education question, to be honest. Uh, there's a little bit more to it. Okay, wow, that's... um. Yeah, that's got a bite. They um, did say drop, and we did not do drops. No. We should no. have believed them. We should have believed them. Um, what got me interested in naval history? I've been interested in a few dry docks, but basically, my nan took me to HMS Victory when I was four. Oh, yes, this is When she was still in full rig and everything. Um, which, obviously, when you're four, everything looks a lot bigger as well. So that was really impressive. Um, oh, that's really biting. Yeah. Is your nose running like mine is? Not yet. Not yet, but the flip my... It's not like my tongue feels like it's on fire. It feels like it's in acid in places. Yeah, it's bad. Um, uh, as far as education, well, as mentioned, went to King's University, um, did civil engineering. Actually, How does it not go away? Largely, I have no idea. Largely because um, <clears throat> I actually wanted to do history as a first preference. And then I had a bunch of other preferences as well, like maritime engineering, um, aeronautics, etc. Mm. But they, the course advisors asked them... My you know, is definitely running too much. Yeah. I'm to get tissue. Sorry. You can I'll answer the going. question in a sec. Yeah. So in a rare moment of sanity, they, um, I, as an 18-year-old, if you can believe, I actually asked them what were the job prospects for someone doing this or that degree. And they said, for history, it was like 3% of people who get a history degree go into a field directly related to history. And for aeronautics, it was like 5 6%. And um, I was like, yeah, that doesn't sound like a good idea, considering that I was part of the first generation in the UK that had to pay for their university courses. So I was like, I'm going to have to get a part-time job, etc. I'm going to have to pay a fair bit of money for this. I don't want to pay a lot of money for a degree that's not going to be of any use. And that then led me down about fourth preference down the line with Sybil. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh yeah, like 85-90% of people who get a civil engineering degree will go into civil engineering. So that sounds like a good result. So um, off I went. But um, I <clears> like <throat> to describe myself as having, although I've got on paper my civil engineering degree, I kind of like to say that I probably studied a fair number of other fields in engineering because in year one, we did a lot of, because all the courses were labelled, so you had like ENG... 401 or something yeah which was general engineering and then there were ce courses which were specifically civil engineering courses and in the engs they stuck everyone who was relevant in that as a big class so you had mechanical engineers aeronautics engineers all learning like say engineering materials <coughs> um and so the lecturers got used to seeing mm. people uh, especially people who were more active in the classes and so as we went into year two and year three and there were fewer and fewer ENG classes more and more CE classes when I had the time so say so I had a morning lecture and then like fifth period lecture and nothing in between um, if I didn't have loads of coursework to be knuckling down with I'd go and sneak into some of the other lectures like the mechanical lectures the aeronautical lectures the maritime engineering lectures and just sit at the back take the course notes etc etc and as far as the lecturers were concerned they didn't care that much because you, you could almost see at the back of their minds, like, oh, yeah, I recognise him from some other <clears> stuff <throat> that I teach, so he probably should be here, whatever. Um, and, of course, they were getting the right amount of coursework from the people on their list, so they didn't, they didn't seem to care that I was there. Yeah. Um, so although I didn't get... Obviously, I didn't do, like, three courses at once, and I never did any of the coursework for them, I did get to at least absorb and get course notes for parts of three other degrees, mm. which help broaden my engineering knowledge a uh, fair bit. So yeah, that was that was my education and I then went and worked in civil engineering for better part of four years. Hmm. Then the recession, well the 2008 
recession or credit crunch finally caught up with me in 2010, then I had to do basically any work that I could get my hands on. Unfortunately, yeah. For like three years, I was like, I was a dishwasher repairman, I was a curtain and blinds installer, I was a bailiff. Um, that didn't last very long because it turns out that's a horrifically corrupt profession. Um, Why are you trying to be the people that collect money are corrupt? Huh? Bailiffs. Yes. What? Yeah, basically, basically I quit when the managers started telling me to do unethical things, which just so happened to correspond with just after I built my full bailiff certificate. And crazy, crazy yeah. that they inform you then. Um, and then I went back into <clears throat> engineering sort of circa late 2012, early 2013. Yeah. And I was in that until April last year. Well, there you go. Good answer. Yeah. Good question. Right. Next up is the ninth one, I believe. Yes, but before we do that, we're going to go and get the ice cream. I think so. Get some ice cream. Uh, there should be two spoons as well. Spoons are already. Nice. Check the go. camera, make sure we're all good. We're looking handsome, we're looking good. Bear in mind, how much did we put on that last one, that last one we did? That was way too much. That was much. like probably four or five drops. Yeah, that was a lot. Let's do a drop each, literally. Drop, drop, yeah. two separate points. Right, so this one is Hellfire Hot Sauce. Show the Cranked. Cover. Look at that. Uh, extreme Black Garlic Reaper Sauce. Nutritional, in fact, calories none. There's like basically nothing. There's like one percent. There's nothing here. It's just literally. If you look at the front, it says they added nothing else. Mm -hmm. It is quite literally just pepper. Yeah. This one's rated twelve out of ten. It has the only nutritional value on this is it has one percent of your daily intake of sodium. <laughs> okay, so it's nothing. We're injecting nothing into ourselves. It's a very. Uh, it's a whole lot of very hot nothing. So we're gonna drop. take drop. 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 This could be interesting. This could kill us. Potentially, this is the end of um, of Two Guys Bad Games and Drink NFL. Killed by hot sauce. And what's the name of this this thing that we called it? We call it Taste Buds. Taste the buds, end of Taste it. Buds, as well as Drakina Games. In, 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 its, in its pilot episode. <laughs> its pilot episode. Right. So you first. <clears throat> I actually don't want that much chicken. Like, I'm, <laughs> we've had so much before we spilled. Okay. Ta da! Go that bad boy. I'm pre selecting my next mm -hmm. piece. Right, so the question is what was the hardest shot of the US trip to do? So far, so good. <laughs> Your voice has risen again. No, it's fine. It's good. This one isn't so bad. Mm -hmm. It's possibly to do with about having about a half. How half many minutes? Well, the other one was so intense mm. that this one doesn't feel so bad now. What well, was the hardest shot? Hardest shot. I think it was anything to do with us crawling through subsections of ships that people didn't access and hardly the, even the owners did, mm. and it was simply a. Bringing us around for the for the first time, uh, going through it together. I know with Ryan, he's been through a lot of the tight crevices and ships. Um, I think we we spotted what looked like a leak, didn't we? And he went under and he crawled mm. under and had a look at that. That was quite hard to film. Yeah, it was just condensation. But I think any time we went through a gun turret of some kind, mm. that was pretty awful. Yeah, um, Salem as well. When we're going through Salem, mm. we had to crawl through all that, the, the, all those sections mm. to get the shots ready. That was pretty tough. Um, I've done rock climbing for like mm. 10 years, so thankfully it's yeah. fine, but carrying a camera is the hardest part of that, because I can support my body weight, mm. but when you're going through these subsections, trying to make sure your lens isn't smashing against all these hard pieces of metal um, was definitely the hardest challenge of all that, as mm. well as making sure everyone was mic'd up, things were clear, and there wasn't too much of an echo. Mm. Uh, a lot of those shots are, are really about making sure that um, the sound works, <laughs> to be honest with you. So, yeah. That's, that's probably the hardest, hardest mm. shot, was, was probably on a Salem on, on those tours. Yeah, it's, yeah, I think, as you say, it's like a, lot, a lot of those narrow passages, they're perfectly traversable if you're in good health. Yeah, but just not with a camera on your chest. Yeah, the minute you're <clears> carrying <throat> anything other than yourself, that's it. Yeah. 
Well, uh, anything you don't want smashed to pieces. Yeah, like get most of the time, I smash myself to pieces by accident. Yeah. That's fine. But the camera is, is expensive. You don't want to you don't want to damage that. I think you'll be fine with this. Mm -hmm. If I think if you eat it the right way, you'll be probably all right. Um, I did straight on tongue action with that mm. bad boy. You feel it for a second or so, but it is by no means anything like the one before it. Isn't Which it? is interesting because it's the. We know that this has to be nine or ten because this came in the nine or ten box. Oh. So. That other one must be below. It's either seven or eight, and there's no way with that one being seven. There's no way that that one could be seven because that's definitely that's insane. So that what? seven, eight, nine. Mm. I wonder. Maybe it's just because we took so much of the other one. <laughs> it could be. I mean, also, do people react differently to different things? I mean, I can feel that beginning to burn. But it's not bad. No. Also, what's my question? What? I am eating. So. Oh, you are eating. I do need to do that. That's the whole point of this. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's kind of tied to what you asked me with mm. my answer. When crawling through museum ships, did you have any whoops moments that resulted in destroyed or damaged camera equipment? Um, fortunately not. Um, I've never lost a camera to a ship thus far, although I'm fairly. that's because I'm fairly careful with them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my camera choices have come down as much to compactness as they have to anything else. Hmm, that's beginning to be a bit of a bite, long term. Um, <laughs> but there have been a number of incidents where I've taken damage. Um, there's one bit of footage which is never going to air, um, which I took when I was filming aboard HMS Victory at the beginning of the year. Mm. Um, I think it was the beginning, either the beginning of the year or maybe when I was on it slightly a bit earlier, but anyway this side of lockdown. Uh, is it beginning to fight just a tad? No. <laughs> <laughs> I like ice cream. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, um, for anyone who's been on Constitutional Victory, you will know that you start on the upper decks, mm -hmm. and the upper decks are usually clear enough that you the average person can stand tall in them. Yeah. As you go lower down in the ship, the decks get lower and lower and lower. Um, so I'd been filming, started up at the top of Victory, worked my way down, and I was then, I was down in the hold, and I was filming quite happily, and, um, then I was panning around, and I got very involved in panning around trying to show what the lower portion of the ship structure looks like, and then as I was panning around on the gimbal, I noticed out the corner of my eye, I could see some, we got, um, like 18th century graffiti carved into the ship. Yeah. I was like, right, I've got to bring the camera up to see that. Mm -hmm. But, of course, you don't want it to be a sudden jerking motion. Mm -hmm. And to be, I mean, yes, you've got the joystick controls, but I've never got the hang of those. So I thought, I'll just bring the whole thing mm -hmm. up gradually. And as I did that, I realised that what I'd seen out of the corner of my eye was actually about six feet away. So I'd gone from a like, golem-like hunch playing mm -hmm. along near the bottom and I kind of stood up, looking at the kit, basically just focused on the camera screen, started walking towards to get a nice pan in shot mm -hmm. um, and took a nice big powerful step forward straight into one of the beams. Um, so there's a very loud thud. Yeah. And from, from my perspective, there was like thud, then another thud of me hitting the deck. And then to me, it felt like I was like blinked. And I went, oh, okay, that was weird. Picked up yeah. the camera and went on. Um, when I went back to look over the footage, um, what had actually happened is I hit the beam, knocked myself out cold, dropped down to the deck, which was probably the last thing I'd heard, and then there's about two minutes of me kind of lying like this with my <laughs> hand out like this, with the gimbal frantically trying to write, oh, wow. write the camera, but it can't because it's jammed up on the deck, just filming unconscious me, just like, oh. <laughs> for oh, wow. a couple of minutes. And of course the ship was completely empty. So no one was going to come down in those two minutes. Yeah, obviously you could probably tell I wasn't there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Someone probably would have come and checked out if I'd been not gone too long. But... Yeah, too long, for sure. Two minutes being knocked out is quite a long time. Yeah, and then I kind of picked, I was waked up, woke up and went, yeah, picked myself up and walked, carried on. Hmm. Usually if you're out for more than 30 seconds, you get permanent brain damage. Mm. So. I have a thick skull. He's probably not even the Alex, we, or the, the Drakinifer we know at this point. He's a different Drakinifer. <laughs> I've taken so many blows to the head from different things at various points. Yeah, when I was 15, I was knocked out by a steel beam in a um, concrete factory. Guy swiveling it around mm. with his crane. Mm. What round? That'll it. do it. <laughs> was out cold. 
I woke up to a bunch of guys talking to me that worked at the factory trying to make sure they didn't accidentally just kill a kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh crap, we killed the kid. Right. <sighs> so, on to source number 10. This is it. <sighs> and, Drac, we have finally made it. <laughs> to the last one. Yeah. The last dab. We have enough battery, we just checked. We have our ice cream. You have, have your caramel... Caramel brownie party. And I have turtly tempting. I see. Which is possibly the single best ice cream I've ever come across. Interesting. The last... Uh, it's also the cheapest one. It's a pound. Yes. It's one pound. <laughs> which the, in, the, in the current UK yeah. environment... This is four times the amount. Well, it's four, four times, times the price. Four mm. times the... Oh, well, four times the... Uh... Are we halving that? We can't possibly be doing half of that. You can take as much or as little as you like. At this point, what does it say on it? This is this is the hardest one. This says, the last dab Apollo is the world's only hot sauce made with the Apollo pepper, the new hottest pepper from Guinness World Record holding chili breeder Smoking Ed Curry. Oh, please don't. The no. Apollo pepper channels no. the sun's energy no. to bring new levels of no. flavor and heat to the, the world. The sun's energy, hot. that's quite a lot of energy, Drac. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite a lot. Heat level 10 out of 10. Oh, it doesn't even have the 1% sodium. What? It's zero. Zero. It's, everything is zero. It's, There's no salt. It, it, it's, There's ah, nothing in this. That's why it's, it's of the warp. It has no... There is no actual physical oh, reality. I see. I see. It doesn't exist. No. It, it's, it's an illusory well, concept. Well, that's a good thing, because we don't either. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Do you want to half this bad boy up? I'll probably still not even have the whole thing because I've The foxes really are going to dine well tonight. <laughs> they absolutely are. We're not going to eat this. Like, we're so full, honestly. Right. I will prepare your question. I'll also have yours up because I'm pretty sure we're going to try and get through this one real quick before it. I, I feel like before it's going to be go. like a build up as well. Right. Well, yeah, I'll ask the question as soon as you put the chicken in your mouth. I may need to repeat it. <laughs> Fair enough. That's satisfied? <laughs> Have you been satisfied by the amount I'm putting on this? Look That's at that. probably enough. That looks like enough to me. Considering what happened with the de bomb. Here goes nothing. So your question is, if you could choose any ship from any time period to magically recover, which one would it be? Recover? Or I saw a question though. That was about altering the history of it. Is that the same time? Well, magically the recover. So yeah, yeah, you're altering the history. But then go back as being me. Yeah, you're magically altering history so that you can recover oh, it. So perfect. you can either find it or make sure it survives or something. Sam Miguel. Spanish treasure galleon. Yes, two billion in gold. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll take that ship over. Mm -hmm. I would... <laughs> oh, no. I think, the, I think no. it's just it. <laughs> I would sail it to the coast of Ireland. Mm-hmm. Probably a little bit more to the Irish Sea. <laughs> I'm good. We are doing this today. I'm good. And then I would um, take one of its mini rowboats. Mm -hmm. I would sink the main ship itself to the bottom of the Irish Sea. <coughs> and then I'd go back as being me mm -hmm. and immediately recover it. Taking all two billion of its gold and probably <laughs> paying some of the tax to the Irish government, the scummy people that they are. Fair um, I would also make sure to write in the history books the same story that Sam McGuill has. Mm -hmm. That way people are looking for it in the completely wrong area. <laughs> making sure that it is still in the Irish Sea where I put... Is that what happened? <laughs> is that... Wait a minute! <laughs> Did I do that and then I forgot? Is that why no one has taken it? I mean, to be fair, Spanish shipwrecks off the Irish coast are not exactly an uncommon thing. <laughs> Good point. Neither, oh. neither are Spanish genetics in the in the Irish gene pool. What do you mean? <laughs> well, not you, but I mean, uh, I've, I've met them. That is, it's like um, it's like it waits ages before mm. it hurts you. <laughs> it's like a bishop <laughs> gains your trust, Just... <laughs> and then moves diagonally. <laughs> Right, are you capable of sp enough speech to tell me more uh, questions? Question time. Bit more and then more, more, more. Perfect, beautiful amount. This is going to hurt, I know. Make sure you suffer like I'm... <laughs> suffering. Alex. Fantastic question here. 
What naval history figure would you like to spend the afternoon with? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> well, there's a lot to choose from. Indeed. Quite the amount. <clears throat> oh. Be alright, though. The chicken loses its appeal after a while. Tell us the chicken is disgusting. <coughs> okay. Sure it takes its time to start kicking you. Naval history figure I would most like to spend an afternoon with. See, there are a lot of people I'd like to spend an afternoon with on the basis of their historical accomplishments. Um... <coughs> There's a few naval history figures I'd like to spend an afternoon with Moses if I could spend it beating them to death with a large book. The Russian ones? Yeah, BT as well. well. They're pretty stupid. Um, the Russian ones just Admiral, kept... Admiral Shestikov and his consistent meddling. I just like the <laughs> Russian guys were like, oh, we need to make a new ship, let's just copy what we did last time and not learn from our mistakes. <laughs> or yeah. now what we'll do is we'll just copy the USS Indiana and then <laughs> we'll just say it's ours. Yeah, as you may have guessed, I've just recently been reading Russian and Soviet battleships. Find it on USNI. Yeah. Oh boy, yeah, that's starting to kick in. Uh, you okay. feel it though, you feel it. It's like, as I said, it is that priest that you love and that teaches you well. <laughs> and after a while, he starts being weird with you. And he breaks that trust and suddenly you're in a lot of pain. Psychological, emotional, physical. Irish cultural experiences, everyone. Yeah, so don't talk to me. <laughs> um, so, uh, but of, of all the people I'd probably like to spend an afternoon with... I would probably have to go with, oh, it's kind of a coin toss, but my mental coin toss between Admiral Fisher, because I just like to note down everything he said in an afternoon and put it in a series of twi Twitter threads. I see. <laughs> um, and see if anyone can distinguish it from modern Twitter. I see. Um, but actually, in my heart of hearts, from a purely technical and engineering perspective, and oh boy, that's really beginning to kick in. Uh -huh. um, I feel it. Would be Admiral Lee. Oh, okay. yeah, well. Because, yeah, I'd basically just spend the entire afternoon going, please teach me all of your technical yeah. expertise when it comes to running a battleship. Um, and also, from, you know, from all the notable experience, Admiral, um, but it's written, been written down by people, Admiral Lee, ooh, um, oh, Admiral Lee is probably story. the... One of the admirals who is most likely to be able to just turn around and go, yeah, let's sit down and share an afternoon's worth of thinking and experiences together. Mm. Um, whereas Admiral Fisher, I think, if you caught him on a good day, it would be fine. If you caught him on a bad day, he'd probably try and, like, stab you or have someone else stab you for him. For him. I've stabbed you. It's kind of understandable. <laughs> yeah. It's an occupation. Stabbed hazard. you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the information you're getting. Yeah. As the reason I have this beard. <laughs> it hides the scars. <laughs> or battle wounds. Yeah. Oh boy, right, yeah, that is um mm. Yeah, yeah, they're right, that was the worst one. <laughs> That's got a long burn to it. Yeah, it took ages. Alright, I'm going straight for the The ice cream is a good cure though. Mm. It's kinda of, my well, mine has like brownie and caramel in it. A bit, bit of different ice cream flavours mm. as well. It helps quite a lot. Mm. Yeah. That's like a plate of death now. It's never even touched this plate. I'm going to break it and burn it. <laughs> so you put it in the dishwasher, the dishwasher's going to catch fire. The <laughs> <laughs> dishwasher starts crying. <laughs> Why have you forsaken me? Well, um, right, so I'm going to go back to the, um, the post I put up originally that has... Six to, okay, it's doubled in questions. Some of them are obviously ones we've answered. I think they are. While we're, why don't, why don't, while while we're, we're trying here. to come down off of the... Uh... Don't we just do some just do random ones? You pick a random one for me and I'll pick a random one for you. Mm. While we're around. I think we've answered most of the um, very highly voted ones. Um... Oh, that's an easy one you could ask me. Mm. Do you believe Drax's story about getting sick from model building? Do you think a well-educated engineer should be overcome by fumes from burning plastic and paint? <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? No, uh, it hasn't happened to me because I had the forethought to not burn plastic in a very confined space. Um, but it absolutely did happen to him because... You were there at the beginning. I was there. 
So you watched my slow deterioration over the first twelve hours. Did. Oh, my nose is running again. Yeah, I watched it happen. So yeah, no, it absolutely is is possible. Um, yeah, no, Drac and I were actually just hanging out after that. Mm. Um, we were just doing a bit of work together because why not? Mm. Uh, I think it was a, just a bit of roof work. Mm. And suddenly, <laughs> you like shut down, and I, I saw part one of the deterioration. And I was like, okay, mate, I'm gonna go home, and you're gonna go to bed. <laughs> Bye, because he, he was like, he was wobbling, he wasn't feeling proper. Thanks, mate. Yes, he was definitely something was going was going wrong. And honestly, being being poisoned by plastic is actually incredibly serious, and it happens all the time. It's a lot more common than people think. Mm. Yeah, because you, I mean, you mentioned you've done loads of rock climbing. I've, I've done most of it with you. So it's yeah. like we're not inexperienced climbers and we have a scaffold tower up and about, yeah, about halfway through the morning, just I was just struggling to Yeah, he's make like, it. I got to go down. I'm like, all right, we'll go down. So but bear in mind, we're about three, three stories up in terms of, mm. of actual height because on a roof, you're, you can add a story for that mm. part. Um, so yeah, it's really not safe if you're wobbling and feeling sick, especially it was getting a very high temperature. Mm. So that was, that was the safest thing. But no, believe it, it's true. I might pick up some of the... The thing is, because this, this thread's gone on quite a bit, and I suspect it will go on for quite a bit more, even though it's on the new, the new YouTube system <laughs> where a, post is only, a community post is only visible for 24 hours, but I'm going to probably keep a bunch of these for a future AMA if people think that this was... Yeah, if fun. you like me and uh, Alex... I mean, uh, me mm. and... Oh, do they go? If you like me and Drag hanging out in general, that's not a problem. We can keep making those. Mm. Ooh, Drac and Elliot, this is easy. Let's say you had a long layover during the America trip. If you had mm -hmm. to choose one, what traditionally American sport, baseball, football, NASCAR, would you go to see? Instantly NASCAR. That would be awesome. As long as you can guarantee it's one of the ones that has a lot of crashes. They all have lots of crashes, it's NASCAR. Yeah. We would absolutely be not on the lower rows, though, because <laughs> that, that is a terrible idea. Just watching it from a high vantage point. Bonus, you each get to send the other to watch a sport you choose for them. I'm nice. I'll let him go see NASCAR. That's the cooler one. <laughs> and he's nice. He'll let me go see NASCAR. Um, that's... Oh, whoa. Hmm. That other one, dude, is still kind of hmm. lingering. Any oh. time I get, I'm getting a hit from that last seven. It's like, more ice cream. Yeah. It suppresses it for a bit. Oh, oh actually, there's one for both of us. Mm -hmm. um, do you play any naval war-inspired games like World of Warships? How accurate do you think they are? And have you heard of Azure Lane and Kent? <laughs> Naval War inspired games like World of Warships. Mm. Yes. We both have played World of Warships. Um, I was in closed beta test. For you World were, of you were in closed beta. We are sponsored by World of Warships. The channel? Has it? I think I maybe like I've think got one. Was it one sponsorship for World of Warships? I've had At some point, mm. right? Yeah, at one point. I think it was years ago. Oh, no, no, it was World of Warships Blitz, the mobile version. There we go. Yeah, it was. Mm. We've been sponsored by them. Um, so it's happened. Mm. They're great games, and they're very accurate. They're very accurate. <laughs> you should definitely play them. W weirdly, weirdly enough, um, I think, yeah, I've actually had more sponsorship offers somehow from World of Tanks than World of Warships, which has confused me slightly. Stupid. World but... of Warships, you want to you wanna reach out mm. again? Because you, <laughs> you guys are great. I mean, yeah, it's like we, I, could do, I do, we could do a World of Warships stream where you I play do the game. admirals. Like every month, they know who I am. <laughs> yeah, they still, they still like. Nah, yeah, World of Tanks no will do it. World of Tanks. Uh, yeah. But yeah, no, I played World of Warships. Um, I played the naval part of War Thunder for a bit before I decided that, that, too. Yeah. that was more like sadomasochism than computer gaming. Um, yeah, um, I War played... Thunder is a good a good flight game though. Yeah, I played I played War, War, War Thunder tanks if I want to punish myself. Um, the, the, um, <laughs> okay, that, well, that's never a sponsorship we're ever going to get. God uh, damn it. Drac, you know the point of the Q&As? Have you seen... Make people like us. Have you seen half the War Thunder videos by their content creators? Half of them just, like, thoroughly mocking the, uh, yeah, the PR they're, team. They're pretty... Um, what else have we got there? Um, I played Navy Field, the original, back when that was out, <clears throat> ages and ages ago. Um, I played Atlantic. We've played Battleships. The board mm. game? Yeah. Atlantic Great Fleet. Game. I mean, half the war games I've played are like Dystopian Wars, Victory at Sea, um, British versus Pirates, etc. They've all been yeah. um, naval games. What was the, there was a second part of that question. Have you heard of the Azure Lane-Kantai collection? Yes, I have. 
<laughs> so I'll say that. People keep trying to get me into it. And what I'm... is it? Because um... I don't know what this is. Okay. So... Very briefly, 30 seconds. Okay. Have you heard of, Have you heard of Girls und Panzer? Oh. Hmm. Good. <laughs> no, I, I haven't. Good for you. A small part of your sanity remains. Oh, um... no. <laughs> okay, so... That doesn't sound good when I translate that. Imagine... I mean, it's anime, so, you know... You're in, getting in the culture mm -hmm, zone. Mm -hmm. So basically, imagine a pair of games, although I think Hentai Collection is also more of a... I know, I think they've both actually got animes and, like, mobile games yeah. associated with them. Where, basically, all the ships have become ship girl waifus. Oh, no. And... Oh, no. um, I, can't, I can't remember which one. I think in one of them... Um, Let's just say their chest size is proportional to their historic displacement. Oh, goodness. All right. No, yeah. I haven't heard of it. And no, we're not interested. <laughs> we're both we're married. We're both married. <laughs> <laughs> the safe answer. Yes. Continue. Everyone knows that married people have no interest in anything to do with women. <laughs> <laughs> or we just know what's good for us. We just know what goes right. <laughs> yeah. We've already gone too far. <laughs> Ugh. Uh, yeah, your, your, your anime sense. wife who cannot reach out through the screen and kill you, unless you're watching The Ring. Um, like, <laughs> whereas... so who's, who's that wife? Um, <laughs> I'm sure it's somebody. Someone's wife. I like how their profile picture is literally like a oh yeah probably, the most whatever. anime thing ever. Good for them. Um, I, I quite like anime. I quite mm. like Death Note. Death Note was awesome. Good storytelling in that. Right. Uh, and then let's do let's do one more each. <clears throat> All right, this is a good one. You can ask me. Mm -hmm. that, one. that one. Okay. So it says, um, after all the time you've spent with Drac, what's the most funny moment you've spent with him, and what's the most somber moment? Somber moment and fun moment. Funny moment. Amusing, I guess. The most amusing. I think a good one is when I threw the powder charge at your face. <laughs> Did that ever even make it to the video? Yes, that's in... Well, that was on New Jersey, so it hasn't gone out, out yet, but it is going to go it out. It is going in there. So yeah. there's a... There 110 are... pound... Ba pa 110 pound... Flipping it. That, that is nasty. Dude, um, that last one re resides with you. 110 pound bagged powder charge to the face. Yeah, I threw it at him. And it comes to show just how strong I am. Yes. So. Yeah, I mean, he carries the powder charges, I carry the shells. I mean, I don't know what the hoist is yeah, really there for. They were kind of useless if you think about it. We did great. <laughs> now, um, somber moment. Mm. Somber moment? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Any more guys. Mm. <laughs> There's nothing really somber, but. Um, no one's died on our no watch. One's died yet. Mm. And if they have, there's no proof. Mm. <laughs> you weren't there. So. <laughs> I don't know. I guess you always have those moments as friends where mm. you need to talk about something. He's had it mm. with me, I've had it with him. Those are somber moments. Mm. I guess, aren't they? Probably, yeah. Those times. Mm. And no, you're not getting any of our private details, <laughs> so screw you. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Let me find a question. You choose what I've chosen mine, you choose yeah. one that you want me to ask you. That's one people always are asking. We're never ever no. going to see that story. That, that's, so that's an in-person only question. Yeah, in-person also, which is completely private, nothing to do with them. Mm. So. Mm. Uh, hmm. that might be I can't answer one. that one because then I'll be shunned and shot by, by like, the people so many people. that did it. Yeah. Um, that one's easy. That one we've answered. How did you end up with your immense understanding of... Do you, do you want to fancy that one? We can't answer the one below it. No. no. <laughs> uh, do, you wanna, do you want to answer that one, really? Because I'm asking the questions here. Is that one that you want to actually bother yeah, answering? I'll, I'll give it a shot. All right. In between <clears throat> hits from the last time. <laughs> Trying to make it short enough so the video isn't too long here. Because mm. th this is a quite an intense question. And the battery doesn't die. How did you end up with your immense understanding... Oh, oh, sorry, of naval history. <laughs> Excuse the hot, I mean, the taste buds. Mm. Dying. Dying. So, 
Um, obviously, I'm going to preface it by saying, you know, there are people out there who know a lot more than I do. Mm -hmm. um, some people, like Professor Lambert, who just know a lot more than I do about most things, um, naval related, and other people who know a fantastic amount about areas they've specialised in. Now, I've already I've mentioned a couple of times um, Dr. Scholes, who works on Salem and Massachusetts. Who, mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, know, he's great. Fire control systems. Yeah, he's awesome. He was he was a cool mm. dude. We 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 spent a long time talking to him. Yeah, he's 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 the main reason most of this stuff we shot on Salem and Massachusetts was pictures because we were just like we're in a place cool picture picture. Well, picture. Honestly, now it's, listen. It's <laughs> our job to film and document, and we're mm. just like, nah, I want to know what he has to say about this. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, no, he was cool. But, with that those that qualification in place, part of it comes from the fact that, uh, as I mentioned, like I got interested in naval history when I was four, and I was fortunate enough to have a grandmother who was just like, "Yep, yeah, I will take you to places. I will buy you the books." Mm -hmm. um, the schools I went to had pretty good libraries. Yeah. Um, and for most of my life, I had an eidetic memory, which was really handy because it basically meant I didn't forget anything I'd read. Mm -hmm. Um, had a few health issues thanks to a very, very unscrupulous employer in late 2012, uh, which caused a whole range of health problems, one of which was partially damaging that. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a perfectly functioning eidetic memory anymore, um, unfortunately, but it, it, mo it, it, the, my ability to retain information is a bit above, is still reasonably mm -hmm. above average. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's not just the fact that I read an awful lot; it's that I'm just naturally able to remember a lot more of what I read, and that's just generally as well. Which is going to help a lot when it comes to dates and people and names of ships and classes and subsections mm -hmm. and portions of ships. I mean, it all adds up, and after yeah. a while, you just tend to um, bring these up without really needing to think about it anymore because yeah. <laughs> you talk about it so much. And yeah, and com combine that with. The you know some of the people I know, mm -hmm. um, and the, <laughs> the, the, the the library of the library of books, um, the vast library of books and documents and yeah, yeah digital digital books and digi digital documents. Digital <laughs> documents. Good grief! How long does this stuff stick with you? Apparently, um, for the rest of my life. Mm. Um. Hmm. Yeah, so basically just reading, naturally good memory, and also exercising mm -hmm. that all the time. Now, coming into <clears throat> doing the channel was one thing, but I found the more I work on the channel, the more I'm able to recall and piece things together, because I'm constantly working, I guess I'm constantly working over that part of my brain. Um, which has led to some rather interesting discoveries and other bits of research that I'm like, oh, that, that's an interesting possibility. I mm -hmm. need to go and chase that down at some point. Um, my reading list, the Q archives, is phenomenally mm -hmm. long. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's basically where that comes from. Well, there you go. Yeah, so, yeah, we have survived. We actually both <coughs> just we about it. managed to get it. We did it. That, um, mm -hmm. that seventh, seventh one? Uh, no, eighth, eighth one. one. Eighth, eighth one, one was yeah. really the shaking bomb. one. The yeah. bomb is honestly probably worse. Yeah. That, one, that, one, that, one, that one was not a little bit of a... I mean, it burned. It was a break. But, it, yeah. <laughs> that one was a break before the last one. Because the mm. last one wasn't really bad. And then oh. it just lasts a very long time. Um, honestly, the worst one here, if you want to really mess up your evening, is absolutely the eighth one. Mm. The bomb, yeah. Yeah, that was good, though. So, yeah, that's... um. That's the two of us ju just about surviving the um, Modified Hot Wings Challenge. Um, if you liked this, then let us know below. If you didn't like it, well, it was a fun we Friday. We had fun. Yeah, and it was a fun Friday, so you don't have to put up with it constantly. If you um, want another episode of Taste Buds, mm -hmm. let us know. <laughs> yeah. All right. See you guys. Bye. <sighs> Yeah, if I ever want to inflict pain and suffering on someone that... That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.